Community First is proud to return as the presenting sponsor of Keys to Hope. Last year's inaugural event unlocked the door to shelter, support, and housing solutions for over 1,500 adults and almost 700 children, making an impactful difference in their lives. This year's Keys to Hope event has come to your home, a place of security, comfort, and familiarity. Through Keys to Hope, you are part of bringing that same sense of home to even more people in our community who are facing homelessness and uncertainty about their housing. Credit unions are built on the philosophy of people helping people, and so are communities. So join all of us at Community First in our supportive pillars. Give generously, and together we will help to move individuals and families from homelessness to home. First is proud to return as the presenting sponsor of Keys to Hope. Last year's inaugural event unlocked the door to shelter, support, and housing solutions for over 1,500 adults and almost 700 children, making an impactful difference in their lives. This year's Keys to Hope event has come to your home, a place of security, comfort, and familiarity. Through Keys to Hope, you are part of bringing that same sense of home to even more people in our community who are facing homelessness and uncertainty about their housing. Credit unions are built on the philosophy of people helping people, and so are communities. So join all of us at Community First in our supportive pillars. Give generously, and together we will help to move individuals and families from homelessness to home. Hello. And welcome to our Keys to Hope event. We are glad and grateful that you've joined us for this special online event. I'm Joe Moth, the Executive Director for Pillars, and I'm happy to have a couple minutes at the beginning of this hour together to share a few of my thoughts with you and let you know what we've got planned. I don't have to tell you that this has been an unusual and challenging year for all of us. Back in March, when everything started changing, we had a staff meeting. At that time, there was so much that we didn't know. And in times like that, I've always found it good to take stock of what you do know. For Pillars, there's two things that we knew for sure. One, we have a mission that is clear, is important, and is vital to hundreds of people in our community every single day. And two, our goal from the first time we heard of COVID-19 
was to find a way to continue delivering our mission despite any obstacles that might come our way. So when we all started hearing about being safer at home, we thought, no kidding, we've been living that motto for years. In so many ways, we are all safer at home. And this is all the more true for those who don't currently have a place to call home. We're stronger at home. We're healthier at home. We are more resilient at home. We are better able to overcome addictions at home. In the end, we all have a chance to be better at home. And we see firsthand too many times what happens when that home is lost for some reason. We see the devastating impact on individuals, families, extended families, and the community at large. At Pillars, we are all about the value of home. The value of home, that's what's behind our theme tonight, unlocking the door. That's our goal, to help unlock doors for people that we serve. Once that door is unlocked, progress can begin. Of course, it's not quite as simple as just a key to the front door. Unlocking doors comes in the form of coaching, addiction recovery, life skill training, parenting, employment, education, mental health, physical health, and on and on. We're together right now in this virtual space because for some reason you care. Now, I don't know exactly where that caring attitude inside of you comes from, you might have had some struggles in your life that you've been able to overcome. You feel compelled to help another person or another family have an easier time than you had. Or maybe somebody close to you had those struggles. And even though it didn't directly affect you, it still had an impact on you. Or maybe you never had those kind of struggles. You never really had to worry about housing or food or domestic violence or becoming addicted to something that might take over your life. But you know those things are real and out of gratitude or responsibility. You want to help someone else who's experiencing those challenges. Or maybe your motivation comes from your faith and you feel personally called to take care of your brothers and sisters. Maybe your thoughts are generally economic and you believe that raising up individuals and families ultimately raises the standard of living for everyone. I really don't know what makes you tick and that's okay because I do know what's important. We're all striving for the same thing. Frankly, I hope we have all of those perspectives represented among us. That kind of diversity of perspective and approach unified to a common goal is incredibly powerful. Simply put, we are bound together in this work. There's not us and you. We're on the same team. We just have different roles. And know that we are so grateful for this partnership. What's Keys to Hope all about? It's a chance for you to learn a little bit more about Pillars, who we are, the full extent of the work we do, how we've responded to the challenges over the last year, and what we see on the horizon. It's a chance to deepen our partnership. And just so there's no surprise, Keys to Hope is an opportunity for you to further invest in this important work. Nothing you'll hear about for the next hour or so is easy or free. So in a little while, we're gonna just straight up ask for your financial support to continue our mission. And together, we will continue to make a very real, very important difference to those in our community who are at a point in their life that they need a little extra support. Those people who need someone to unlock a door for them as they take the next step on their journey to a better place. Hello and welcome, I'm Tim Hoff. It's a great honor to welcome you all to the second Keys to Hope event to benefit Pillars. It's a great honor to be with you representing two special community organizations, Community First Credit Union and Pillars. As Chief Lending Officer at Community First, I have the privilege to lead our lending team to help deliver to our members and to our communities one of the key foundations of the American dream, a home. Helping families unlock the door to home ownership is truly one of the most fulfilling things we do every day. As a board member of Pillars, I'm reminded the door to home can often be closed to many in our community. That's when Pillars and their amazing staff can help bridge this housing gap by providing shelter, support, and solutions to address the housing needs in our community. At Community First, we're proud to invest in organizations that make our community better. Pillars is without question an example of that. At the heart of what binds our organizations is a core credit union value people helping people. 
At Community First, we've adopted a word that is at the core of what we do. The word is Meiraki. It's a Greek word that means to do something with soul, creativity, and love, and to leave a part of yourself in what we do. I believe Meiraki lives in the work that Pillars does as well. As the leaves have turned and the air has become cool, we're reminded that we're entering a season of thanks. Thanks for all that we have and for all the people in our lives. I'd like to think that this is also a season of hope. In these difficult days, hope is something that we all need a little bit more of. Not just having hope, but also giving hope. Hope to those around us, but also to those who we've never met. It is that hope that will unlock the door. Thank you for joining us. Pillars would like to thank our HOPE sponsors, Capital Credit Union and Kimberly Clark Corporation. Additionally, we'd like to thank all our sponsors for joining Community First Credit Union in making Peace to Hope possible. Pillars provide shelter, support, and solutions to address the housing needs in our community. To understand Pillars is to understand the value of a home. Home brings safety, security, growth, and social connection. There are many reasons that home might cease to exist for a person or a family. The loss of a home creates consequences for that person, their family, and the community at large. When someone who's lost their home has nowhere to go and no one to turn to, Pillars Crisis Housing is there for them. Clients come to our two shelters knowing that they'll have a roof over their head, a bed to sleep in, and something to eat while they're in crisis. But that's not the end of the line. Many people find their own path out of shelter. Others need ongoing support. That's where supportive housing comes in. Pillars help people move from a shelter stay into an affordable home of their own. Supportive housing clients get more than just a place to live. They get a team of people working alongside them, supporting them, and understanding them. With Pillars staff cheering them on, clients work towards increased self-sufficiency and stability. For some Pillars clients, the cost of housing is their only barrier. Those clients rely on stable housing to meet their needs. Pillars and other cooperative landlords make rent affordable based on a client's income. That leads to an upward spiral towards self-sufficiency and independence. Other Pillars services meet vital needs in line with these programs. Pillars Street Outreach builds trusting relationships with the unsheltered with the aim of connecting to community resources and other Pillars services. Pillars Resource Center gives Pillars clients and the unsheltered a hub of health, employment, education, housing resources, and a place of welcome and respite for people who feel unwelcome most places they go. Diversion prevention stops homelessness before it starts. Keeping people in their homes and avoiding a shelter stay. Ascend, a Pillars initiative, combines safe, affordable housing and mental health support for young adults ages 18 to 25, with the aim of equipping these young adults for a lifetime of success and independence. Pillars programs serve those facing challenges all along the housing spectrum. Together, Pillars, our clients, and our community work to ensure that episodes of homelessness are rare and brief, and everyone has a place to call home. When you unlock the door to home, what's one word from what awaits you inside? Now, let's hear from you. Chat in your response. The early days of March at um, the shelter, Pillars Adult Shelter specifically, were I think just like everyone else was feeling, it was pretty stressful and uncertain um, and just scary. Um, so I think we were feeling exactly like like everybody else was feeling. We were 
really just worried about the um, health and livelihood of our staff, our volunteers, and our clients. So that was our main concern um, prior to the shutdown. We decided to move our operations to a local hotel in town after collaborating as a leadership team within Pillars and saw that um, a local community as well as Min uh, a shelter in Minnesota also shifted their um, facility to a hotel and that it was going well. So I think we got the go ahead on a Friday and then 48 hours later on Monday morning, we were moving 100 single people experiencing homelessness to, to that hotel. Where the hotel stay was actually a huge gift from the community. Um, being able to get all our clients together from two separate shelters um, really brought all of our help and aid into one building. Um, not only did clients have their own room and were able to distance, but they were able to get closer and have those supports all in one building at the same time. We also had meals all together. It was a lot more of a family unit and something that you'd really need mental health-wise and stability-wise uh, for our clients to just know that we're all there in one building. The hotel stay made um, life a lot easier for many of our clients um, just because they knew that they were safe with um, the transit center shutting down, the library shutting down, and really many local businesses that they would often frequent. Our shelter is only overnight and it opens at 4.30, closes at 8 in the morning. So really they are on their own during the day to you know, fill that idle time, but if everything's closed, where where do you fill that, that idle time? So the hotel really filled that void of that missing eight hours for people to be safe. Um, they were able to isolate in their rooms and not be around other clients. And they just had somewhere to go all day and, and support through it, whether it was mental health, physical health, anything, they just had that support. July 1st was a big preparation uh, for, uh, for clients to come back to shelter, all be under one roof um, in our two separate shelters. I think there was a mixed amount of emotions, both positive and negative, moving back. We were very reassured that everyone, you know, tested negative. Um, and moving back to our normal facility, we're very familiar with the facility. You kind of have a sense of comfort in your own facility. The, the staff were very stretched in that large hotel. It's a lot of ground to cover, and we really were overseeing double the clients that we would normally see with the same amount of staff on hand. Not only just the daunting part that everyone hates of moving, but um, you know, setting up the case management and getting them into a room but having them distanced uh, was definitely a big task. But um, the bright side is just seeing our Pillars team uh, pull together and, and collaborate and see the, um, staff that don't usually work in the shelters coming to help and everyone, no job is too small for, for any person in Pillars. We're just getting the job done and, and making sure that everybody's safe and, and collaborating. So that was really wonderful to see everyone come together through, through this pandemic. How did you feel when you unlocked the door to your own place for the first time? Now let's hear from you. Chat in your response. There's a variety of obstacles that people end up um, experiencing when they're trying to secure something. Some of our folks that are looking to rent maybe don't have the best rental history or don't have as much income as somebody else. Um, they've been through a lot, so there's barriers back there and they have to overcome them and then really contest with the other part of the population, the other part of the community that's also looking for housing. A relationship between a case manager and their client is going to be a partnership. It's a journey that we're going on with them. They're in the driver's seat, we're in the passenger seat. We're there to assist, we're there to aid, we're there to advocate. At the end of the day, it's just about what are their goals and how can we accommodate to that. 
when we talk about how we provide services for case managers, they provide it as advocates, as coaches, as supporters, as connectors, and as appreciators. And each one of those roles is really important to make sure that the clients are receiving all that they possibly can from the case manager. It gives us a chance to really ramp up our advocacy and put those shoes on because if somebody's not getting what they need in another within another resource or within the community, that's where we go to bat. We're looking for housing options. We're making sure that they're receiving the services that they need and they deserve. Our clients learn from us how to communicate with landlords, with their neighbors, going amongst the community and kind of getting acclimated back to that. Um, what we learn from our clients is definitely their daily struggles that we're not necessarily experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. I know that I live my one life, but as a case manager, I now get to live 19 different lives and all of the information and all the trauma, but also all the successes that come with that. Well, I had a, a number of obstacles uh, that was in my way. So my relationship, um, with my, with my counselor is more than a friend, it's family. Uh, Ms. Crystal is family to me, somebody that I trust. And the first day I met uh, Ms. Crystal, she looked me in my eyes and she said, we're getting you a place. That look in her eye, that confidence in her eye, um, I believed her, you know? I believed her. One of the things she, uh, she relayed to me is that um, your future looks way better than your past. And uh, to me, that was extraordinary. That really moved me, that touched me. Single room occupancy was intended to use a unit that's larger, so like a four bedroom or a five bedroom, um, and put single individuals in each of those rooms. Let them rent out and then have communal living spaces while they still have their own space in their bedrooms. This gives folks an opportunity to have a place to learn some more, even more social skills, emotional skills, because now you're, you're navigating roommates as well, um, and work with a population that wasn't able to secure housing otherwise. A client's story that's close to me is really any client that has overcome the immense amount of traumas that they have, whether it's being on the streets for numerous years, whether it's being family abuse, drug and alcohol, mental health, and seeing them in their own place, happy, loving life, and really seeing a true positive future for themselves. What does it take to unlock the door to a stable home life? Stable housing does two important things for us. It's the next step out of shelter for many people. So after that experience of homelessness, we can get into safe, stable, affordable housing. It's also a preventive step for us. So if we get somebody in before they ever have that low point of homelessness in their life, they're set up and they're making progress on that path. One of the underlying principles of stable housing for us is for rent to be affordable. That means we set it at a percentage of the household income. We work with our Pillars clients making rent affordable by checking their income and charging 30% of their rental income. We know that 30% is affordable for all people and that leaves money to pay utilities and food and other needs. Typically, that's about a $400 difference for a household between what they would pay for affordable housing at Pillars versus what they would have to pay for other rental housing in town. $400 goes a long way towards medicine, transportation, education, um, and all of those things you need to support your family. There's such a need in our community for affordable housing. We know that the need is double the amount of housing that is out there. Pillars Stable Housing is able to give 124 family units housing every day. 
Pillars has made my life easier. Um, I can provide a home for my family. Um, I have been able to pay bills that I haven't been able to in the past. Um, I was living on my parents' couch, um, so this definitely is has helped uh, a lot. I was in the Homeless Connections for uh, like a couple months before I was placed with the Pillars program, and um, I've just been so blessed to be able to provide a home for my family. When we did get the notification that we were um, able to move in, me and my fiance ran across town because we didn't have a car to get the keys. Um, that's how thrilled we were to get into a place and we were already moving our stuff in that same day. Um, and it was, you know, I was taking pictures of the place and my keys and, and, you know, putting them on Facebook and everybody's just like, oh, I'm so proud of you, you know, so it was, it was a really great experience. Ascend is an initiative that we have that focuses on young adults aged 18 to 25. We know that that's a vulnerable time um, for people because some of your other supports go away, your supports through school and maybe through family. So we focus on getting you ready for the rest of your life. We focus on employment, physical health, mental health, and getting ready for a full, fulfilling lifetime ahead. It shows what we do um, instead. Of, most of my job is very much numbers, who's paying rent, how many units are we filling. It's really easy to get lost in statistics, and it's nice when it actually is a human being that we're changing their lives. Community First is proud to return as the presenting sponsor of Keys to Hope. Last year's inaugural event unlocked the door to shelter, support, and housing solutions for over 1,500 adults and almost 700 children, making an impactful difference in their lives. This year's Keys to Hope event has come to your home, a place of security, comfort, and familiarity. Through Keys to Hope, you are part of bringing that same sense of home to even more people in our community who are facing homelessness and uncertainty about their housing. Credit unions are built on the philosophy of people helping people, and so are communities. So join all of us at Community First in our supportive pillars. Give generously, and together we will help to move individuals and families from homelessness to home. What would life be like without home? Now let's hear from you. Chat in your response. Earlier I mentioned that we'd be asking for your support. Well, it's time. I hope you've learned a little bit more about Pillars. I hope you're even more excited about bringing this good work to life in the Fox Cities. None of the stories you heard tonight, none of the care Pillars clients received, none of it is possible without your support. Each year, Pillars relies on financial support from people just like you, people who care about the Fox Cities, people who love their neighbors, People motivated to make the world better for the vulnerable. People move to make a difference. Now's the time to make a difference. Now's the time to invest in shelter, support, and solutions to address the housing needs in our community. It's as easy as visiting the Pillars website. Just go to pillarsinc.org donate. You can make your gift through a bank transfer or with a credit card. If you use a credit card, you'll see an option that allows you to cover the fees associated with your gift, helping it go further and serving those in need of housing. And our good friends at the J.J. Keller Foundation would also like to see your gift go further. Executive Director Heidi Dusek is here to explain how the J.J. Keller Foundation has partnered with Pillars to amplify your contribution to Keys to Hope. Heidi? 
Thanks, Joe. At the J.J. Keller Foundation, the Keller family focuses on supporting the most vulnerable in our community. We are on a mission to meet basic needs by propelling nonprofits of impact and investing in innovation. We are partnering with Pillars because of their impact and innovative approach to address safe and stable housing needs in our community. The J.J. Keller Foundation also strives to inspire giving, which is why I'm here today. We've committed to match $30,000 of your gifts for Keys to Hope. Every dollar you give will go twice as far toward ending homelessness in our community. Please join us and Pillars in ensuring that experiences of homelessness are rare and brief and everyone has a place to call home. Give now and please give generously. You can unlock the door to worth and dignity. You can unlock the doors to removing barriers. You can unlock the door to a brighter future. You can unlock the door to family happiness. You can unlock the door to new possibilities. You can unlock the door to saving a life. You can unlock the door to new beginnings. You can unlock the door to independence. Give now at pillarsinc.org slash donate. $2,500 keeps all shelter clients warm for a month. $1,300 keeps one family in their home and out of shelter. $1,000 readies a rental unit to become a family's home. $500 covers one client's recovery support for two weeks. $250 covers one family's rent differential for one month. $100 buys new sheets and pillows for one family. And $50 gives one client one month of public transit. Again, give now at pillarsinc.org slash donate. Need help giving? Text help to 920-716-5802. Give now at pillarsinc.org slash donate. $2,500 keeps all shelter clients warm for a month. $1,300 keeps one family in their home and out of shelter. $1,000 readies a rental unit to become a family's home. $500 covers one client's recovery support for two weeks. $250 covers one family's rent differential for one month. $100 buys new sheets and pillows for one family. And $50 gives one client one month of public transit. Again, give now at pillarsinc.org slash donate. Need help giving? Text help to 920-716-5802.
been a joy to have you with us for this time of storytelling. Your presence and your support have unlocked the door to a brighter future for those we serve. And the magic of a virtual event is that the support doesn't have to stop here. If you know somebody who might be as inspired as you are by Pillars and our work, please tell them about us. Encourage them to give. Our clients thank you. Now it's time to unlock the door for you. Each Keys to Hope registrant was entered in a drawing for an Unlock the Door prize package. In keeping with our theme, the winner will unlock the door to a two-night, three-day stay in, where else? Door County. We assigned each of you a virtual key. And the key that unlocks the door to our Door County prize package belongs to... Thanks for joining us for Keys to Hope. Special thanks to the J.J. Keller Foundation, Community First Credit Union, and all our sponsors. But especially, thanks to all of you who joined us virtually tonight. This has been a trying year, but one of the things that has been so encouraging to us is the way you, the community, has stayed with us every step of the way. We're so grateful for your support and for your partnership. We'll be following up with you on this event through email. Thank you and I hope to see you soon. this thing for like five years, it practically is my baby. <laughs>